All right, welcome back to another tier list, readers and watchers of the Boxing Encyclopedia. This time up are the 80s heavyweights, the lost generation of heavyweights who mostly failed to live up to their potential. Again, the rankings go C for average, B for above average, A for good, S for above and beyond, and Z for one of a kind. Only their 80s exploits are allowed here, so no 70s for the likes of Larry Holmes and no 90s for the likes of Mike Tyson. This ranking is my own opinion, so don't take it as law. You ready to roll again? Let's start with John Tate. Big John Tate entered the decade as the WBA champion, having won the 1979 tournament for said title. He was upset at the last second of their bout by Mike Weaver in his first defense just three months into the decade. Tate never recovered. His destiny and perhaps boxing history altered by that magical left hook. Given that he won the tournament in 1979 and lost the title so quickly without doing much, I'm giving him a C. Yes, he won a title. But was he really up to par with the other faces of the 80s? You decide. Up next is Mike Weaver. After shocking Tate to claim the WBA title, he defended it twice against Harry Kutsia and James Quick Tillis. He lost it in controversy to Michael Dokes and a further controversial draw ensued in the rematch. Before being a titleist, he was inconsistent and he returned to that after his reign. He lost to Johnny Deploy, Pinklin Thomas, Bone Crusher Smith, and Razor Ruddock. His best wins after his reign were against David Jocko and Carl The Truth Williams. A mixed, inconsistent, yet slightly above average rap sheet. Just like his career. Mike Weaver gets a B. Up next is Michael Dokes. A man in the talks for the fastest hands in heavyweight history with Muhammad Ali and Floyd Patterson. Undefeated, he captured and defended the WBA title against Mike Weaver, but was upset by Harry Kutsia. He resurged after the loss over the rest of the decade en route to the Ring Magazine voted Best Heavyweight Fight of the 80s. He lost, but made a good showing against Evander Holyfield. His best win was the controversy against Mike Weaver and he only had one defense. Still, he only lost twice in the 80s and he's one of those heavyweights who at his best, you'd hesitate to bet against in almost any mythical matchup. Dynamite Dokes gets a B. Up next is Harry Kusia, the South African hope who pulled it off. The first white heavyweight champ since Ingemar Johansson. Sadly, that's about all he has as far as the 80s goes. Outside of Michael Dokes, he lost the notable fights. That includes against the likes of Mike Weaver, Ronaldo Snipes, Greg Page, and Frank Bruno. His bionic right hand may have been more trouble than not as it cost him stretches of his career. After Greg Page dethroned him, he fought twice more. So nothing crazy to write home about here. Quite average. Kutsia gets a C. Now for Greg Page, the sensational Louisville Rage, undefeated in the 80s until Trevor Burbick derailed him and finally captured the title in the same year he lost out on another title. Page's tale is one of staying the course. He beat Jimmy Young, Quick Tillis, Renato Snipes, and Harry Kutsia for the title. He lost to Tim Witherspoon, David Bay, Buster Douglas, Joe Bugner, and Tony Tubbs for the title. Mixed resume and a lot of lost potential. He's another one of those heavyweights who at their best is competing well against most other matchups. Six foot three, good jab, power, movement. He was the complete package. Greg Page is B tier bound. Let's talk Tony Tubbs now. He was undefeated all the way to his crowning moment of snatching the WBA title from Greg Page. Seven months later, he lost it in his first defense, a pattern you may have noticed has grown in prevalence. 
He would lose only once more in the 80s, and that was in a bid to become a two-time champion against Mike Tyson. Also on his resume were Jimmy Young and Bone Crusher Smith. TNT Tubbs is yet another of those gifted warriors of the era who was a problem at his best. There's a reason he was able to dethrone Greg Page, and he's certainly a tier above those in C, so I'd say that lands him in B. The man who dethroned Tubbs, in fact, was a tier above the rest himself. Now for Tim Witherspoon, one of my personal favorites. Terrible Tim took the leap rather early in his career when he lost a split decision to Larry Holmes. Some believed he won. What is for certain is that the bout was one of the highlights of the 80s, reminiscent of Larry Holmes' war against Ken Norton five years before it. Less than a year after, Witherspoon captured the WBC title and lost it another five months later. About a year and a half after that, he captured the WBA title, becoming the third man to win a portion of the heavyweight title twice. Eleven months later, he lost it in disgrace of sorts. Rather up and down career in the 80s, but the context shows that Don King's antics may have played a role in some of his hiccups. That and questionable scorecard decisions by judges. Three asterisk losses in a two-time champion 80s. His resume includes Ronaldo Snipes, Quick Tillis, Greg Page, Bone Crusher Smith, Tony Tubbs, and more. Beyond that, Terrible Tim is one of those heavyweights you'd be more than comfortable betting on against any other heavyweight if he's at his best. In my opinion, he's the third best heavyweight of the 80s. Terrible Tim Witherspoon is A tier. Damn near S tier, but the man there says otherwise. The bone crusher, James Smith, is up to bat. His crowning achievement was avenging his loss to Tim Witherspoon and capturing the WBA title. Outside of that, he lost eight times in the 80s, but remained a dangerous, sporadic contender. His resume includes Frank Bruno, Jose Ribalta, and Mike Weaver. A very up and down contender, but solid at his best. One of the men who survived the distance with Mike Tyson too. Bone Crusher gets a B, just barely. Now for Trevor Burbick, the great derailer as I've deemed him. He derailed John Tate, Greg Page, and Pinklin Thomas. He retired Muhammad Ali. He went the distance with an irritated Larry Holmes. The Pinklin Thomas derailing gained him the WBC title. He lost to Larry Holmes, Ronaldo Snipes, Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson, and more. Good contender with a better resume than not who I'm torn over. Is he a B or an A? Is he better than the likes of Bone Crusher and Mike Weaver? Perhaps. But is he better than Michael Dokes, Tony Tubbs, or Greg Page? Perhaps not. Is he on par with the A-ranked Tim Witherspoon? Not quite for me. Trevor Burbick is a B. Plus, so close to an A-. minus. Now let's do Jerry Cooney, the unfairly deemed Great White Hope. He never captured a title, but he was a righteous contender who I feel has become slightly underrated. In fact, Cooney's the only non titleist on this tier list. Jimmy Young, Ron Lyle, and Ken Norton fell to him before he fought a war for the ages with Larry Holmes. He lost, but he made a good showing. He fell off after the loss, culminating in his loss to Michael Spinks for the IBF title. He only lost to the best of the best fighters. And the same remained true in his last fight outside of the 80s against George Foreman. That being said, Gentleman Jerry Cooney is a generous B. If he pursued the WBA title, he'd have probably become a titleist. I can see him mixing it up well with his fellow B rankings and flat out beating those in C ranking. Now. How would he fare against the A-ranked Tim Witherspoon? You decide. Up next is the formerly known undefeated man who brought the jinx, Michael Spinks. He was a heavyweight for three years, but he left his mark. He dethroned the super champion Larry Holmes and won the rematch. Overall, 
he defended his portion of the title thrice. He was the first light heavyweight champ to step up and beat the heavyweight champion. It took Mike Tyson at his blazing peak to make casual fight fans overlook or even downright forget his amazing career. Still, I'm not sure he's a shoe-in to beat names like Tony Tucker, Tim Witherspoon, Greg Page, Tony Tubbs, and the overall who's who of the 80s heavyweights. Still, he did what they couldn't, and that was beat Larry Holmes. So, he's getting a very generous A from me. Think of it as an A- minus because I'd personally take Tim Witherspoon in a matchup. Tony Tucker is up. Tucker was undefeated for all of the 80s until he went the distance with Mike Tyson for Undisputed with a broken hand. He gave Tyson his toughest fight of the decade, evident in Tyson's exclamation that anyone who wanted a shot at him would have to get through Tucker. Outside of that, Tucker's resume wasn't spectacular. His undefeated streak included an old Jimmy Young, David Jocko, James Broad, and Buster Douglas. Good but not great. Still, he's another one of those complete packages who you'll hesitate before betting against. I'm giving TNT Tucker a B. I think he holds his own against everyone in B and C. I also think that he could put up a good fight against terrible Tim Witherspoon. The countdown nears in with Larry Holmes. The Easton assassin's reputation precedes him seven years the champion with 20 title defenses took the lineage from muhammad ali defended his title while hurt never allowing excuses to deter him trevor burbick leon spinks ronaldo snipes jerry cooney tim witherspoon bone crusher smith carl the truth williams and more lie on his resume he arguably won the michael speaks rematch too Larry Holmes is in my personal heavyweight holy trinity with Muhammad Ali and Lennox Lewis. At his best, I'd take Larry against any other heavyweight across history, past and present. That being said, Larry Holmes gets an S from me. What? An S? Yes. It's like I alluded to in the 70s tier list. If we were counting Larry's entire career, he'd be Z-tier, but as far as the 80s goes, there is one man I have above him. The one you came for. Iron Mike Tyson. Kid Dynamite. The baddest man on the planet. Though Mike may be painfully overrated today in the form of clickbait thumbnails and video titles, along with the sheep herds of casuals who swear he's unbeatable in his prime, reality yields that he was the real deal. In the 80s, Tyson burst on the scene and snatched everyone's attention by storm. He unified the division the hard way, cementing his status as Muhammad Ali's successor. Larry Holmes never did that, despite maybe never needing to. He never lost in the 80s. He crushed Michael Spinks, who ended Holmes' reign. Oh, and he beat Larry himself, too. His resume includes Quick Tillis, Mitch Green, Marvis Frazier, Jose Rabalta, Trevor Burbick, Bone Crusher Smith, Pinklin Thomas, Tony Tucker, Tyrell Biggs, Tony Tubbs, Frank Bruno, and more. Mike Tyson revived and saved heavyweight boxing by ending the lost generation. It is because of him that the 1990 silver age of heavyweights was possible and able to be ushered in. He is the gold standard of the 1980s heavyweight division. But please, do try not to overrate the man, everyone. He's great, but not the greatest. Well, what do you think? Who should be higher? Who should be lower? Should Larry have gotten the nod over Tyson? Be sure to leave me your list in the comments. I'm aware we skipped some names like Leon Spinks, Francesco Damiani, Tyrell Biggs, Carl Williams, Quick Tillis, and more. Those guys didn't make the cut because they scored below average, at least in my opinion. 
Neon Leon, for example, won the title in the 70s, was thrashed by Holmes in the 80s, and moved down the cruiserweight after. Unfortunately, he was caught on the bridge, a mere transition champion. If you'd like the full story of the 80s heavyweights, click or tap the video on the top left. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to Boxingpedia by tapping my logo and hitting subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell. Hit that bell so you can get notifications every time I go live. It's free. Stay frosty. Steve Charles Jackson, author of the Boxing Encyclopedia.